Hello innovators. Welcome to iLearn Place, the place where learning meets fun. In this video, we will show you the 10 concepts of the iLearn Place Takshak Battlefield Games Level 2. Specifically, we will demonstrate how to control a motor by using a switch and a battery. This tutorial is perfect for beginners and will introduce you to some basic 10 concepts such as connecting electrical wires, understanding the working of a motor and battery, and learning about voltage and current. By the end of this video, you'll also learn about switches concepts such as the single pole single throw switch SPST and the single pole double throw switch SPDT. So, get ready to dive into the world of STEM and learn how to control a motor with a switch and a battery. Let's get started with wires concepts. Have you ever wondered why most electrical wires are red and black? In this video, we'll be discussing the significance of the colors red and black in electrical wiring. Red and black wires are commonly used to denote positive and negative connections in electrical circuits. The red wire is typically connected to the positive terminal of the battery or power source while the black wire is connected to the negative terminal. This color coding helps to ensure that the electrical circuit is wired correctly and that there is no confusion when connecting different components together. The use of red and black wires is not just limited to batteries and power sources. They are used in a variety of electrical applications including speakers, amplifiers and even home wiring. So next time you see a red or black wire, you'll know that it is likely carrying a positive or negative electrical charge. And that's it for this wire concepts. We hope you found it informative. Let's get started battery working. Have you ever wondered how batteries work? Here, we'll be discussing the basics of batteries and how to measure their voltage. A battery has two electrodes, a positive and a negative. When a device such as a motor or bulb is connected between these electrodes, current flows from the positive to the negative terminal through the device and in this way, the device starts running. But what happens when we disconnect the device? The current stops flowing because there is no way for it to flow. However, there is still a voltage difference present between the positive and negative terminals of the battery. We can measure this voltage difference using a multimeter. Generally, we consider the negative terminal to be at 0 volts and the positive terminal as the voltage of the battery. For example, if a battery is rated at 9 volts, that means the negative terminal is at 0 volts and the positive terminal is at 9 volts. Using a multimeter, we can measure this voltage and make sure that the battery is functioning properly. And there you have it. A basic understanding of how batteries work and how to measure their voltage. Let's get started, DC motors working. Have you ever wondered how a DC motor works? In this video, we'll be discussing the basics of DC motors and how they function. In a DC motor, there are two magnets and a rectangular copper wire coil placed between them. The opposite poles of these magnets are aligned to each other and both ends of the copper coil are connected with split rings labeled as P and Q. Two brushes are also in contact with the split rings and a battery is connected between these brushes. The positive terminal of the battery is connected to X and the negative terminal is connected to Y. When the battery is connected, current starts flowing between the positive and negative terminals through the split rings and the copper coil. The path of the current in the coil is ABCD. According to Fleming's left-hand rule, a downward force is applied to the up part of the coil and an upward force is applied to CD, causing the coil to start rotating. As the coil rotates, the split ring also rotates with it and the direction of the current in the coil changes. Now, upward movement is applied to up and a downward force is applied to CD. This process continues and the motor rotates at its full speed. This is how a DC motor works. And there you have it. A basic understanding of how DC motors work. Let's get started switches concepts. Here, we are going to learn about controlling motors using a switch. As we know, if we connect a battery to a motor, it starts running automatically. But if we want to control the motor, we need to use a switch. Here, we are using an SPST switch, which means single pole single throw. This type of switch has two terminals, one is common and the other is used to connect to the load, such as a motor. And if we connect a switch in between the battery and the motor, we can switch on or switch off the motor using that switch. 
When we turn on the switch, connectivity is established between these two terminals and the motor starts running. In addition to the SPST switch, there are other types of switches available, such as the SPDT switch, which means single pole double throw. This type of switch has three terminals, one is common and the other two are used to connect two loads. In the SPDT switch, the battery's positive terminal is connected to the common terminal of the switch and we can connect two loads from the other two terminals. That's why it is called a single pole double throw. In our case, we are using only one terminal of the battery, so it is called a single pole. In the next video, we will learn about double pole double throw switches. Thanks for watching. See you in the STEM concepts of ILP Battlefield Level 2 Stars 2 video.